George Cole and welcome to The Sherlock's Show. Today's show has something for everyone. Coming up first, last year's wedding season may have been a total write-off, but this year they're firmly back on the agenda. And if you're debating what to wear, then we have you covered with some of the best affordable looks out there. I'll also be joined by the founder of My Bump Pay, Toby Azari, to chat through her journey from career woman to motherhood. She's sharing her advice on what steps to take to ensure you maximize your maternity leave rights and navigate your journey back to work with confidence. We also have some delicious summer drinks inspiration and Sherlock's lifestyle editor Heather Steele is here with this month's roundup of what to eat, watch, read and buy. But before all that, Lou and Georgina are here on the sofa. Welcome, ladies. I haven't seen you for ages, Georgina. I know. So long, so long. It's really nice to be back. I yeah. walked in and I was like, oh, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, how are you? I am good, thank you. Good. We had a nice duvet day yesterday, um, although the weather was pretty shocking, wasn't oh it? God, it was like one minute, it was really sunny. Then it was absolutely bucketing it down. Not nice. Yeah, not we, nice. Had a, we had a day off. Um, we everyone has worked so hard in the last however long, and it's so hard for everyone to stop. Even when you're on holiday, it's a, anyway stops for some, not for others. Uh, so anyway, it was nice to do it. Although yeah, it was making weather. What did I you know, do? No, really nothing. I pretty much spent the whole day on the sofa. Oh. It, was, it was almost like quite a nice excuse to be able to do that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, I yeah. At one point, I thought I'm going to sit on my bed. And read my book. I mean, that didn't happen. I was then joined by a child and we ended up watching <laughs> Faulty Towers. But oh, anyway, oh, it's the best investing ever. Uh, can't rate it more highly. Um, anyway, from Faulty Towers to JLo. Um, I mean, you couldn't find two bigger extremes in the entertainment <laughs> world, could you? I mean, she's, well, there's a lot to say in that not only. Does she just look so banging? The woman never ages. She is completely ageless. Like, how it's, is she 53? It blows my mind. Two? Three? I think three. Two? Hot two. Fine two. Anyway, I mean, it's, it's a small point, isn't it? Yeah. Whichever. She, it's, I mean... Yeah, they're the pictures of them on the yacht, and there are some where they have compared how they were on the yacht the first time they were together to now. And she looks... Exactly the same, if not actually better. Yes, I was yeah. going to say. It's insane. She always gets better and better. I, I don't, it blows my mind. It, it's like the eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know who she's seeing, but I need them in my life. Yeah, I need that number. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, obviously the big news. What are they called? Ben, Benefer. 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 So ben they claim that that was the first time ever two celebrities' names were kind of merged okay. oh. to create that. Benefer, is that when it, where it came from? Yeah, that was the first one. Well, um, they are back. It was 20 years ago. That's madness. I mean, poor Jennifer Garner. I mean, that is a kick in the teeth, isn't it? Mm. Like, not only does your husband leave you, when you marriage break up, but he never really loved you in the first place. I mean, ugh. Yeah. Harsh. Yeah, not cool. Will you go back with the next 20 years? Oh. The one that got away. <laughs> so, so much time. I, I just think in that time, you'd have changed so much as well. So, I don't or know. Not. I don't know, because then are you going back and trying to recreate what you had? Yeah, you exactly. You're completely I mean. different people. They've now got, like, five children between them, you know. And she's been married about three times since, I think, and him once. Yeah. So, there's a lot of history there. And he's gone through rehab and, you know, yeah. you're not the same people. So, no, and maybe no, that's why it might work, because they're not the same people, because obviously it fails yeah. I mean, the first he, time. wasn't he going to run for president? Weren't they going to be, weren't Jennifer and... Ben going to be in the White House. Like, really? Isn't that George and Amal? I thought no! they were the White House no, no, candidate. No, 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 no. Oh. That's Promise far more you. sensible. Yeah. No, no, no. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't it? Um, no. There was chat quite a few years ago really? now. I promise you, I'm not making this up. I promise okay. you. Just cut in the comments. Would you just agree with me? <laughs> there was this great chat that she would have been a wonderful, you know, mm. first lady. Um, J-Lo, less so, I'm thinking. Yeah. Does it make you question his talent as an actor? The fact that he's with Jen, who's quite a diva. I don't know. No, no. How would that question his talent? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like, did he really win three Oscars? He's not behaved that well in the last how many years? I kind of. I, don't know. I, I feel, feel like, like he, he was, peaked early. Yeah, definitely. In those uh, Pearl Harbor days. Oh, yeah. In his prime. <laughs> such a good film. <laughs> Pearl Harbor. It's such a good film. It's such a good film. soundtrack. I've yeah, the soundtrack's that, amazing. That oh. ballad at the end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the anyway. scene, the scene in, um, with the, the curtains and the... Um, it's an epic film. Oh. I need to watch again. It's Kate Blanchett, isn't it? Yeah. 
And who's no, the other no, one? No, 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 Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale and Josh Hartnett. Yeah. Oh, I mean the dream. We got to, we got to rewatch Far <laughs> Harbor. I know I need to. That's weekend. the next duvet day. In fact, so I got a, a weekend without my children and husband this weekend. I need to be the book and get home and watch Far Harbor. Lovely. I mean, uh, anyway, moving on. Time is marching on. Uh, God, from J Lo to Lady Kitty Spencer. I mean, wow, what a wedding. That's like that's how. You'd expect Jennifer Lopez to get married in five <laughs> yeah. Christian Dior dresses. Though they might have been Balmain and not Christian Dior. Dolce & Gabbana. Oh, it was Dolce & Gabbana. Sorry, Christian. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dolce & Gabbana. Five. Yeah, five. I mean, five. All very regal looking. Very, very. I feel like we haven't seen enough of the fourth and fifth dress, but the her pre- uh, wedding dinner outfit. She had this strapless blue gown with flowers all over it. If I'm honest, not my vibe at all. No, Don't mine, like it. But you can't like. Anyway, for people watching who might not know who Kitty Spencer is, she's Diana's niece. Yes, niece, and she is thirty, and she's just married a man called Michael Lewis. Yeah, is he also the money money saving expert? <laughs> no, that's Martin, Martin Lewis. That's Martin. <laughs> Michael Lewis, anyway, not to be confused with our wonderful money-saving expert. Michael Lewis is not saving any money. He's no. spending it all on his... He's a billionaire. Dresses. He's a billionaire. So Tell us more, Georgina. Where does he come from? I think he's South African. He's a billionaire. He's 62. She's 30. And she had a lot of dresses. She had a lot of dresses. I rest my case. I rest my case. <laughs> and, and the picture of him, I actually thought was her father walking to her down the aisle. Yeah. They look good together. I think, I think. he looks pretty amazing for yeah. 62. I mean, he's kind of in the J-Lo camp. He's like slim, buff, tan, like tan white, yeah. white tuxedo. He, he looks like, he's like a cross between um, the newsreader. What's his name? Well, Georgina's favourite. <laughs> Hugh. <laughs> Actually, he's, He's slightly he like Mark <laughs> Austin. He's across between Mark Austin okay. and George Hamilton. Sorry, Mark Austin. I think you're great, but <laughs> okay. Anyway. Did you like the dresses? Um, I really wanted to like at a glance. I really wanted to to like the kind of main event, the white, yeah, the one where she's walking yeah. with George Hamilton. Um, <laughs> and I thought the shoulders were amazing. Shoulders were amazing. But I, I literally not sure how she could breathe in yeah. anything she wore. And it's the summer, and when you said yeah, in Milan, heavy. Hot. Yeah, hot. Mm. Yeah, there's a real structure to that. It's kind of like you know her poise would have to be perfect the whole time. Um, it's a real like statement, but yeah, you can't like get loose and get partying. Although she changed for that part, so yeah, it was obviously I mean, just a statement for the church. Very regal. I'd like to know more about them. I feel like I'm going to go on a journey now to discover mm. to discover more about them. I mean, I'm kind of intrigued. Yeah. I'm hoping there's going to be a sort of wedding film or. There definitely like will be. be I, think we'll, I think we'll see more, definitely. Uh, all right, we're going to finish our chat today. I mean, I'm going to come to you last because I'm like so in awe of what Regina's got in the studio <laughs> today that I almost can't control myself. I saw it in here, I was like, whose is this? It's like, it's mine. Um, I'm going to start off with the thing I'm loving because I think mine is quite basic. I can't believe yours. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, why do you say that? Because you're just so late to the party. I mean, I can't okay. talk actually with mine. Okay, <laughs> can I just caveat that I bought Bose headphones yeah. at like huge expense yeah. three years ago, yeah. two years ago. So I was a bit loath to then spend another 200 quid on something yeah. else. They're freaking expensive. Do you want to tell everyone else what it is? <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> they, okay. I this know. new hot product has just come to the market <laughs> from Apple. All right. I said it was boring. You know, Hodge told me it wasn't, so blame her. The show manager's fired because she said this is really interesting that she needs to get some. Anyway, my, the product I'm loving. I didn't say it was hot or okay. new. Okay, I just said the product I'm loving. They are new to me, and they are called the Apple Air Pro. I got the Pro ones. So have I. Well, well. I've got the Air Pro pods. And they're excellent. I mean, <laughs> what's the difference between them and the non-pro, the amateur? They self-charge well, in oh. the pot. Oh, okay. Is that the answer? Because mm -hmm. my husband's got the other one. He was a bit jealous. Yeah, and they've like, got the um, extra noise cancellation in them. Oh, I mean, they, yeah, I can't hear a thing. Yeah. I'm saying. Anyway, I have to say, I've taken insurance out, which my husband doesn't know because he gets a bit cross about that kind of thing. 
because I know I'll lose them. Okay. But the fact that I've been carrying around my great big bows, yeah. which are excellent. Um, and to Hodge's question, because she was keen to find out more about okay. them. Okay, do tell. <laughs> Actually, she's laughing now, but you know. Uh, they don't fall out of your ear when you're running. I put them in and I started jumping up and down the kitchen. I was like, Mommy, what are you doing? I was like, Just checking. They don't fall out. Anyway, they don't fall out. It is one more thing to charge, but... I'd say invest if you haven't already. I think when you're on the go as well, when you you know if you're going out for a walk and then you've got calls coming in or whatever, then having to you know plug them into your phone or whatever, all this thing, or all be chargeless, wireless. Sorry, having something not so heavy around your head, I think is. Also, if you're watching something with your other half, Mm -hmm. you can have an ear each. When you're on a call with someone, you have an ear each. Yeah. So there we go. All the inside knowledge. Do you have them, Georgina? I have, um, no, but members of my family have them. I just think they are the most uncomfortable thing. Oh, do you? They do not work in my shape Have you tried here. all the different things that come with them? No. Come yeah, three you can get sizes. sizes. Oh, okay. really? Okay, yeah, okay, now Let's I'm in, on. now I'm in. I will just say, don't buy the cheap ones, buy cheap, buy twice. If you're going to, if you're tempted, buy the real deal. No, what's your hot product? Um, now I've said that yours is new, I'm now going to completely backtrack because... Um, we have started watching, so I've given up on Love Island and I'm out. So we were looking for something else to engage with in the evening. And we've started watching White House Farm. Have you ever watched it? It rings a bell. I feel like. I mean, so I watched that about five years ago. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a true crime docu, uh, not docu, um, series. It's based on a true story um, about a murder investigation and somebody's wrongfully accused and it's got Freddie Fox and Stephen Graham um I'm really really enjoying it it's only six parts um yeah on Netflix came out last year so yeah I am late to the party I've said that <laughs> but it's really good I'm not saying anything um, and Cressida Bonus is in it as well actually ah mm-hmm. she's so gorgeous yeah. uh on, on the TV Rex and I just quickly say you think we were on a podcast we're taking our time so much I'm sorry I'm getting cards <laughs> flashed up at me just very quickly have you watched My Unorthodox Life has this no. been talked about? Oh my god! No. New reality show. Haven't watched it yet. Six parts, I think, on Netflix about okay. an American woman who was, I think, an Orthodox Jew, left the Orthodox world behind her, and is now CEO of some massive corporation, and is a bit of an A-lister. Has yeah, massive job. It's all about her, her family, her kids. I think one of them, a couple of them are practicing to okay. Jews and she's not. Anyway, it looks brilliant. It's called Ooh. My Unorthodox Life. My husband sent it to me yesterday and he's like, you'll love this. Okay, great. Oh, good. Sorry, Georgina. Da, da, da. Oh my God. Shall we just take Heaven. a moment before I even speak to admire the beauty that wow. is my new tray? Is it Edit 58? It's Edit 58. It's been out of stock for ages. Been on the waiting list for a long time. Have you? Yes, and... Here it is. I love it. How much is it? A uh, hundred and eighty. I thought it was going to be so much more than that. I mean, that obviously is a lot for a tray. Yeah. But I thought it was in the. Well, it's all handmade. Work. You know, it's a kind of artisan product, and it's it is of really art. strong. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I kind of don't ever want to put anything in it. You know, and how it's are just you so going to use it in the house? So at the moment, it is just in my kitchen on the island where I needed something to put in, kind of the post, the newspaper, the sort of the i. All the stuff that, like the iPad, all the stuff that just gets, you know, left oh, to yeah. kind of sit on the side. I think it needs something prettier in it than your post. Well, this is, I've only had it a day. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of thought you'd put it, you know, on, like, on your coffee table and then dress it and then kind of... Well, I think it. eventually, but at the moment we're in between houses, so at the moment I'm just kind of using it in a quite a practical okay. way. But I think, yes, the reason I went for the big size is because actually I think you could have some nice magazines, you could have a little plant pot yeah. or a candle and you could have yeah. it on an ottoman you know and it would look gorgeous but and you could take it yeah. in the garden and put yeah, it on like it's, it's really really strong it's really so really nice. sturdy i want to see like a citronella candle on it or something yeah. it's absolutely gorgeous i know i just don't want anyone to actually put liquid on it or, no, on it or anything. no liquid so that is not yeah. for it's carrying so drinks gorgeous. no this is all mine and no one in the family is allowed to touch it i know or me but i might have to order one i love that thank you so much can't beat a good gossip with girls coming up next why not spice up your summer drinks repertoire with some delicious recipes from hotel chocolat if you ask me they all look totally mouthwatering
of the styling questions the Shilox fashion team get asked a lot is what to wear at her wedding. It's one of those moments in which you want to look and feel fabulous, but the costs soon rack up. With that in mind, we have trawled ASOS to find you the very best affordable dresses for wedding season, modelled by the beautiful Winnie, who is going to appear uh, in the first dress. Woohoo! I hadn't <laughs> seen this. I was like, don't show me. Absolutely love it. Oh, it's lovely. It feels so light. It, can well. I just... Can I just stroke you? Um, it's really lovely. I like the sort of peak of shoulder. Yeah. I, I'm going to throw it to my friend on the sofa. Lou, half. Hi. It was great. Think? I mean, Winnie, you're going to look amazing in all of these. <laughs> this one is kind of giving me bridesmaids vibes. Well, I think it. it I think this suits a more formal wedding setting. Um, but yeah, you look great in it. I love it. I just love a one shoulder as yeah. well. It's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. It's £85 and it is linked in... The show notes below. Winner, winner. Okay, next up, uh, Winnie, is this gorgeous yellow and blue floral print. So we're going to go for this one. So go and have a change and come back to us. Okay, dress number two. You ready, Winnie? Yes. Come on out. I feel like we need music. Oh, <laughs> oh I love that. Oh. I love the shape of it being a little yeah. bit more fitted and then the drop hem a little bit oh, lower. Oh, me too. It's so cool. It's really expensive. I'm trying to think who's done it and I can't right now. But that is, that's a very, I mean, I think Saint Laurent have done sort of mini dresses with yeah. that ruching, haven't they? Um, oh, I adore it. And, and the it colours really... look so good. And it's £40. Pounds. That's mad. It's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, rental is amazing. We've talked about rental a lot. Yeah. But actually, to go to ASOS and buy something like that, then stick it on Depop. And that's so know, the length is great running. as well. Little yeah. white sandal. I love it. Can you give us a spin? A little spin. It oh. feels it feels really nice. To and wear. this neckline and the sleeves, you look you Super look feminine. dreamy. Gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. Love nice. it. Okay, dress number three. Okay, Winnie, dress number three is Ooh. That's like a little tea dress almost, isn't it? Similar it's shape, actually. It's not quite so much of no, a drop, he um, drop waist. But similar, similar shoulder. Similar shoulder. And, and turn around, Winnie, let's see the back. Yeah, very similar. It's lovely. This one is £60. It's, it's definitely got some self-portrait vibes going mm. on. Um, it looks lovely. I think I'd probably prefer the other one for yeah. 40 do, Interesting. Do you think that's acceptable to wear to a wedding with the white base? That's a good question. I... Meh. I, if that was me, I'd say yes, but I'd run it past the bride out of courtesy. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think, think it's nice maybe like the day after a garden party. It maybe depends how traditional the wedding is going to yeah. be. It's more, I'd say it's more a garden party dress, yeah. nice christening dress, nice summer lunch. Really pretty. So lovely. Nice. Feel good? Feels lovely. Light, very light. You look great. You look great in them all. You look great in them all. Okay, <laughs> that was dress number three. Oh, this colour is just heaven. I'm excited for this one. Here she comes. Pretty. Oh, that that colour looks really so nice. good on you. Isn't it a great colour? Can I, is it scuba -y? It's Yes. It's scuba. scuba sweatshirt but it's got more of a shine. It's scuba, isn't it? It's stiff, it holds its shape. Though. Oh, there's Oh, shoulders. that's lovely, yeah. isn't it? That's it also really comes in like a, a powder pink as well, which is gorgeous. That would be a nice bridesmaid dress too. This is called the Shirt Bunny Tie Prom Midi Dress. And it's 60, it's 45 pounds. That's very good. It's great. I love that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, wonderful. Dress number five is going to look amazing. It's like a red, the red emoji. It's the salsa girl. Da, 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 da. Oh. Wow. Oh. But I want to be you and I want it. <laughs> oh, that is fabulous. That has got a broad wedding vibe written yeah. all over it. I want to dance in bare feet and hitch it up and dance yeah. all Just night in the sun. Beachy hair and oh, I love you in it. That one is 82. God, what a wonderful edit. Well done, team. That just is so beautiful on you. Isn't like, it? it's really elegant and I love the ruffles, how they fall down the body. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, next. 
I love about that as well that it's not too tight anywhere. No. Do you know what I mean? It's got a sort of really relaxed yeah. vibe. Amazing. Here she comes. Oh, wow. Do you know, I have to say, I saw this on the road. I was like, hmm, I feel like Nancy from Oliver's about to arrive and put her costume on. However, I mean, it does look lovely on you. Lou, I you think were quite a fan of this. Yeah, I think it's really fun. I think there's a lot of, uh, as, as lovely as all those dresses look, there are a lot of that sort of style out there. And I feel like this is a little bit more individual and it kind of looks like it could be vintage. It's from yeah. Sister Jane, who are obviously, you know, all about those kind of big dresses. It's, you know, Cecily Banson, five-ish. I just think it's cool. Keep going, keep going, keep going. She's, she's like, no, I'm going to defend that dress. No, I think, I think each their own. I think you'd look lovely in anything. That's the trouble. But I do like the sparkle. I feel like this is just this is quite a lot going on here. This but anyway, you could probably remove the brooch. You can. There's a there's a little clip. Where you okay. Can, but you're sort of left with nothing. I tried that. Yeah. I like the the diamondish detail. I like those. I yeah. Like those. yeah. Anyway, lovely. Uh, I think we're going to finish on a bit of a corker. Can't wait to see this one. Okay, last. I'm excited for this. I think it's going to be my fave. Oh, that is so gorgeous. I love it. I do. I'm just taking it. Oh, wow. That is so pretty. This is reclaimed vintage, reclaimed vintage inspired couture maxi dress. It's 48 pounds. It is so beautiful. It looks, it just looks so vintage. I adore it. Has it got little, like, sparkly bits yeah, on it? Yeah, teeny tiny little um, sequins just throughout. Just, wow. You know, basically. That just looks so expensive. It does, and it feels so light and skinny. And has it got little shoulder pads in the top? Uh, no, it's just a bit of ruching on okay. the shoulders. Okay. So. Gorgeous. That. Gorgeous, gorgeous. We've taken your mic off you, so if you can't hear Winnie, it's because it was <laughs> taking so long for her to get the dresses on and off. Um, Winnie, what's your favourite? I'd say my favourite between this one and the first one that we put on. Okay. Lou? I think the lilac ruffle. Lilac ruffle. Mine, will you pick it up for me, Winnie? Is I that one? I it would be. I just <laughs> thought you'd look like an angel in that. Uh, what a great haul! Thank you so much, Winnie. Thank you, Lou. Uh, next up, it's Heather. Where would we be without her cultural musts for the month? Hello, I'm Heather Steele, I'm lifestyle editor at Sheer Lux, and this is my July art list. So the cookbook I've been using most over the last few months is this Perfect Pasta at Home book, which is from the team behind Pasta Evangelist. So I think by now everybody has tried the pasta through the door service. But yeah, this is a really nice way if you want to do something yourself completely from scratch, then yeah, this is the book to do it. They've also sort of split the book so they have got 10 minute sections, as well as much longer ones as well, if you know wanted to make a really slow cooked ragu. But yeah, it's got these really, really delicious things in this one, like gnocchi with sage, butter and they've got their carbonara of dreams which is one of the things you can order usually um, through the post box service so yeah if you're looking to like up your pasta game and like want to learn a few tricks on how to make stuff yourself you don't necessarily have to make your pasta from scratch in this either so you have to be put off by any tricky methods then yeah this is definitely a really good cookbook to try in the summer there have obviously been loads of drinks innovations over the last 18 months or so and one of the best ones that I've discovered recently is called the Drinks Drops and they do loads of different cocktails through the post and things and their latest launch is these sort of wine-esque bag-in-a-box cocktails. So they've teamed up with lots of different bars such as Hawksmoor, Trailer Happiness in London and also Crazy Pedro's in Manchester who have collaborated on this particular box to do their watermelon margarita and each one has 20 servings so all you need to do is pop it in the fridge to make it cold and then obviously if you've got people coming round you don't need to do anything all you need is your glasses some ice and I think in this case a little bit of lime and yeah it's ready to go so I'm actually going to a hen do this weekend so I'm going to take this one along and I'm sure it'll go down an absolute treat and also yeah the packaging is really cool as well 
I'm cheating slightly with this one because I actually bought it last summer, but it is still a new launch. So the item I've been enjoying the most recently is this uh, sun chair that I got from Sunday Supply Co, which is an Aussie brand, which you can now buy over here. And they basically do these amazing deck chairs and umbrellas and basically beach things like that in a variety of colours. So this one is obviously the boldest of the lot, naturally, that's the one I went for, but they also do it in lots of neutral and really pretty colours. And it's something that I've been using loads on my balcony. So it made so much sense to get these ones, which really are compact. And also, even though they're metal, they're really, really lightweight. So also I've been carrying it down to the beach in Brighton as well, whenever the sun's come out. So they're not the cheapest ones, I know, but they are such a good investment. Even last summer, I think we used them, you know, at least 30 times. They're definitely worth the money. And yeah, they'll last for ages. So yeah, if you're staycationing this year and need something that's lightweight and small to go in the car, or if you're just looking to upgrade your furniture, you know, have a little few extra chairs if you're entertaining at home in the garden, then yeah, definitely look at Sunday Supply Co because they've got some really, really lovely bits. So the TV series I'm most excited about is Vigil. There isn't an exact start date yet, but rumour has it it's going to be the end of this month or beginning of next. And you might have already seen the trailers on the BBC. So it focuses on a submarine called HMS Vigil. And the story is about a missing fishing boat that goes missing off the coast of Scotland. And then there's also a death upon the submarine. And all of a sudden, the police are coming into conflict with the Navy and the Army to try and work out what on earth happened. So it's the same writers and team behind Line of Duty and Bodyguard, so you know it's going to be good. And it's also got a really, really good cast. It's got Saran Jones from Dr. Foster. It's got Martin Compton from Line of Duty. It's got someone from Sex Education in it. It's really got a great cast. So yeah, you just know it's going to be one of those sort of peak BBC dramas that everybody's going to be talking about. It should be hitting our screen soon and it's something that I'm really looking forward to watching. One of the novels I've been reading this month that I've really, really enjoyed so far is Shooting Martha by the actor David Thewlis. So it's his second book and it comes out next month. And yeah, so far, so good. So it centers on a director called Jack Drake and he's shooting a film about his life and he is looking for the ideal actress to play his late wife, Martha. And, you know, things aren't going well on set. You know, he's trying to recreate his upbringing. It's a film about his own life, the death of his parents. He's filming it in his parents' old house. Things aren't going quite to plan until he one day goes to the theater on the off chance and sees Betty, who is basically the spitting image of his late wife, Martha. And from there, he's like, right, I need her in the film. So far, so good. It then gets a bit weird when on set, he suddenly really wants her to embody Martha. And the next thing you know, she's wearing all Martha's clothes, her rings, everything. And things start to take a bit of a creepy turn. So it's a little bit like Vertigo. It's a little bit like Rebecca. It's definitely got those kind of Hitchcock vibes to it so far. And yeah, I've no idea what's gonna happen. If you're looking for a new book to read this summer, I would definitely give Shooting Martha a go because so far it's excellent. That's everything from me this month. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you, Heather. Amazing recommendations, as always. Next, I'm joined by founder of My Bump Pay, Toby Azari, whose mission is to support women when it comes to their maternity leave, their rights, and knowing how to navigate their return to work. Toby, welcome. Thank you so much. I am thrilled to be here. Oh, Finally. Well, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> I know, we've been trying to make this happen for a long I know. time, and I've been following you for a while oh, now. Thank and, you. I mean, for people watching that don't know my bump pay, you are a platform to support women. Well, you you, yeah. you explain, you'll explain better than I will. Exactly that. It's designed to help women smash the glass ceiling with the baby on the way and beyond, basically just showing them that you can absolutely live life, smash your goals in the workplace and in life and enjoy it all at the same time. And when did you set it up? Gosh, I did it in 2018, whilst I was on maternity leave with my first. You know, when you have those ideas and you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't. This probably isn't a good time because I'm navigating this whole kind and, of... And, and you say you're pregnant with your first. What Were you feeling there wasn't something out there that was talking to you that was going to give you the information you wanted as a woman about to start, yeah, a new period in her life and her career and 
try and merge the two. Exactly that. I, I felt like there was so much information out there, really good information out there, but I felt like it all wasn't in one place in a way that I would find it accessible and fun. And all my friends, we were all having these conversations. So I just thought, why not just go for it myself and just try and make it happen? Amazing, amazing, good for you. Well, I'm thrilled you did because just watching you, I, I feel like no one else has spoken about these things in a sort of inspirational, <laughs> glamorous way, or quite like you do, anyway. Um, can you tell us about your, yeah, a bit more about your own journey, where you are now? You've got yeah. two small children now, two yeah. amazing small children. Um, and you also have a pretty full on full time job. Yeah. And this is on the side as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. Yeah. Tell it, how has it evolved and how are you coping with it all? <laughs> It's a good question. So I started when I was working with a completely different company. I was kind of the first person to kind of go through the maternity journey there. And I thought, right, I'm just going to do it because we all have all of these questions. I thought, actually, if there was a way to get all of this information in one place about how you can still grow your family, hopefully have a successful career, do it all. I know yeah. it's not I know it's not easy, but it is definitely, definitely possible. So that's kind of what sparked it all off um then I had one child and then I went back to work and, then and how I, much time did you have off between child one and two and did you go back to the same job so I went back to the same job I went back for just under a year and then had the second child my first maternity leave was a little bit longer than my second maternity leave my second maternity leave was basically during lockdown right <laughs> so that was not a fun experience um so it was good to go back but the second maternity leave I think I got a lot more clarity about what I wanted for me my family it was brilliant because I think COVID really just forced people to think actually is this really what I want to do long term mm. or actually can I challenge myself and do mm. something completely different I think the stat is that 40 percent of people are leaving their jobs wow. since yeah. the pandemic. Not and that's surprised. for lots of reasons, like moving out of town, starting a side hustle, wanting a career change, wanting to travel. But it's a pretty huge statistic, isn't it? What was it like going back to work after maternity leave one and two? You started a new job, so that's a, that's a whole new thing. But how was it that after that first period off, how did you find it? How did you find going into the workplace how did you prepare yourself for that? Because yeah. that's kind of what you help women do, exactly. isn't it? The first one I found was I had loads of nerves, but also equally really invigorating. It was really such an amazing feeling to think, right, I'm going back to this thing that I know I can do. I'm really confident with it. And actually, I'm taking that step change from kind of being at home to now kind of going back into the corporate world. So I found that really kind of invigorating and exciting. But equally, I found parts of it And were you terrified about yeah, going back? Absolutely. I was terrified in so many different ways. Terrified because I felt like my body had changed and I didn't actually look maybe the same way that I used to look like before. You know, the work pace place changes so quickly so I was a bit terrified about what if I missed but I knew that I could actually fundamentally do the job so that was a really kind of good confidence booster but there were things around childcare that made me nervous you know child falling sick how's I going to juggle all of that yeah. you know my husband's got quite a big job and you know his responsibilities as well so how are we going to navigate all of that as a family um, and also kind of learning everything that I was doing with my bump pay on the side how was I going to do both and then falling pregnant with the second and kind of navigating all of that at the same time and, and do you have any tips for women who might be going back to an employer where there aren't other mothers and they don't feel like they're going to get that much sympathy, empathy when it comes to children being ill or they're being a sports day or whatever it is. Do you have any advice to people about like breaching that kind of stuff with your employer? Yeah, absolutely. I think you almost have to have a plan A and you have to have a plan B. Don't be afraid to ask for help. So yeah. that might be help from your wider network. It might be help from your parents. It might be help from friends. But absolutely, you shouldn't be scared of having that conversation with your employer. I think a lot of these conversations are not about presenting problems, but actually about presenting solutions. So it's just, you know, facing it up front and saying, you know, there may be X, Y, Z situation that comes up, but here are my solutions and here is how I actually plan to tackle it. Yeah. So I think having that conversation up front rather than being scared to have that conversation is definitely what I would advise. And, and yeah, and I think that's so sensible. And it's it's the same for preparing to go on maternity leave, isn't it? It's it's almost, I always think it's better just to say these things, Absolutely. to sit your employer down and say, look, my life is going to change. Things are going to be different. I really need your support. And by the way, Lily, you have to give me your support. Yeah. Um, so can we just sort of get this out in the open and realize I'm still committed to my job, whether that's with a child 
And I think that's quite, as an employer, I think that's quite comforting to hear. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I always say can control that narrative as yes. much as you possibly can. Don't allow assumptions to be made about how you're going to do it. Just go in there with the solutions and the ideas yeah. of how you could possibly do it rather than letting people think, I wonder how she's going to cope. Yeah. No, actually, you go in and say, and this is how I'm going to cope. Yeah, and that will give them the comfort not to feel like they're going to lose trust in you or, you know, they're going to have to rethink your position or whatever. Not that they're allowed to anyway. I mean, you are very much in control, aren't 100%. you, as the women going back to work. Um, just in the workplace with your peers and, and you know, being confident, you know, I think some people do lose their nerve a bit, mm. don't they? What advice do you give to people who might be nervous about being in the workplace again, having been out of it for a while? Absolutely. So we run these masterclasses as part of my bump pay. And one of the things that I love doing are these exercises where I really force women to kind of get really tangible and write down some of their past, present achievements and actually literally stare at them and look at them and actually recite them back and kind of share them with the group and actually it's so powerful and we mm. all get encouraged by hearing those and you're thinking oh my goodness you've done that I've done this yeah. you've done that actually together collectively we've done amazing things as women and as mothers so I think we shouldn't be afraid to actually get really tangible yeah. write those things down almost memorize them it's yeah. almost I kind of call it like your return a pitch to yourself so almost like your elevator pitch that you would have for a business but it's like your maternity yeah. return a pitch yeah. so I say go for it really remind you of yourself of the things that you're totally capable yeah. of because they're so still true. there it's still in there it's like riding a bike yeah. isn't it just you're like oh I can still do this and I think that's so true think back at all the things you achieved write them down um can we talk briefly I mean you look glad you always look so glam <laughs> um I follow along and always think you dress so well. Um, is that something you really, I really believe it's important to women. Um, is that something you think is particularly important when going back to work? Oh, 100%. I think for me, I'm always about kind of dress. If I try and dress the part, I feel, you know, a yes. little bit more yes. the part. So yeah, for me, 100% dressing is a big, big part of it. And I think some people are like, oh, why do you do that? And I said, just try it. And then they try it. And then like, actually, I think yeah. I think you were right. Um, so I absolutely love it. It brings me so much joy. And that's part of the reason why I kind of weave it into my bump pay, because I think you can be ambitious. You can be somebody who really wants to kind of climb the career, career ladder. And you can love what you wear as well. They and don't that's have to inspiring. Be that you're going to inspire other people. And I think it brings respect as well, doesn't it, from your seniors and your juniors so. <laughs> and, and everybody and also means you get to be another persona when you walk out the door and Absolutely. leave the children behind you're like ah, I can be me again yeah. um what about networking and having a network of mothers do you I mean I certainly find at school it's so important to have other working mothers mm. in your kind of network who you can go oh my god have you done the plant growing competition I haven't and know that you're not the only one kind of battling in the juggle oh 100% what 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 advice would you give to people who perhaps don't have a network and you know you feel should have one yeah absolutely I say find your tribe I know it's not easy but you'll be surprised even if you just approach another mum who's mm. working at the same time you'll be so surprised how open they are to the conversation how many things you probably have in common and differences and yeah. how actually you can just support each other yeah. and often you can find them in the workplace as well you can find them in friends you can find them in schools as well um I have this amazing whatsapp group where we're all kind of championing each other on to kind of do various different things um and it could be your boss and it could be your your leaders um I have an incredible female CEO who has kids and as soon as I saw her I was like right I need to work for her because she Love gets that. it. Um, so, yeah, I say do it. Join my bump pay. Come along. There's so yeah. many of us there as well. So true. And I think I think when you, something about the minute you have a child, I think women sort of get naturally even warmer, don't they? You yeah. kind of feel this love. I remember walking into a play group and sort of feeling like, God, if I hadn't have had my baby with me, I'd run a mile. <laughs> but I sort of felt like I could do it because... You know, absolutely. You crouch my prop, whatever. It doesn't sound very good about your child, does it? But anyway, um, yeah, so with you on that. Uh, just some final words on how important you believe it is for women to go for it and go back. And uh, I mean, you're obviously, yeah. that's your mission. But um, yeah, leave us with some parting words. Oh my goodness. I just think, just do it. I always think, you know, what would a man do in that situation? And absolutely, they wouldn't hold themselves back. And I think the more of us actually just step forward and say, 
I would love to do that. I would love to go for that opportunity. You know, I've got a solution with my kids. I'll mm. figure it out. Maybe you need to change it as it go along. As it goes along, that's fine. The more of us that raise our hand and just go yeah. for it, the better. Yeah. You're so right. You'll figure it'll be chaos, but you'll yeah. <laughs> figure it out. And I think some of the best women we have at Sherlock's are mothers. The someone love said the other day, God, will they be okay with that? And someone turned around and said, She's a mum. Of course she will. She'll have done it by eleven o'clock every morning. Like they've <laughs> yeah. done we've done a million things. We've been on the go since whatever time. Exactly. I think, yeah, I think mothers have a huge amount to give. It's so important. Yeah. I think it's brilliant what you're doing. Thank you. Um, do follow along at my bump pay. Thank you so much for coming. Thank on you the so show. much for having me. This is amazing. That's it for today. Thank you so much. Toby, Lou, Georgina, Heather, and Winnie. On the next show, we have more fashion, an interview with Samata. CEO of Red Carpet Green Dress, a new makeover segment with beauty brand Charlotte Tilbury, plus some fitness from Sculpt and Tone PT Melissa Kenter. We hope you won't miss it. In the meantime, we'd love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up, and do subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye bye.